What makes a good pilgrimage? Or perhaps a better question is, who makes a good pilgrimage? And after spending 10 days in the Holy Land with the Footprints of God pilgrimages, my answer is a resounding Steve Ray. Or more precisely, it's Steve and his wife Janet Ray, as well as his co-pilgrimage guide, Amer Shehada. This was an incredible pilgrimage experience, and it came at a time in my life when it was certainly needed the most. For more information on the more personal, reflective side of the pilgrimage story, please feel free to check out my Holy Land Vlogs series. I'll link to those in the description. Now, just as a disclaimer, I will say that I was invited on this pilgrimage for free. It was because a couple canceled and I was swapped in the last minute. Additionally, Steve Ray is one of my company's Catholics for Hire's clients, but I was never asked to make this video. So the fact that I'm making this should serve as a testament to how moved and impacted I felt because of all the work that Steve, his wife Janet, and Amer have put into this pilgrimage. Let's break down what a good pilgrimage looks like. I think that a good pilgrimage is comprehensive, it's comfortable, and above all, it is energizing. I'll delve into what each of these means throughout the video, but in summary, the experience that Steve has crafted helps you to seamlessly experience the glory of the Holy Land and come out of it a more enthusiastic and passionate Catholic. From the moment you step on the plane, heck, even well before that, Steve is already equipping you with all the information that you need to have a good experience. When you sign up for a Footprints of God pilgrimage, you receive plenty of information well in advance. A packing list, a cultural customs list, a full guide of every place that you'll be visiting. This means from the moment of leaving JFK to Frankfurt, Germany, where our connection was, I felt taken care of. One thing I learned on this experience is that the relationships Steve has formed with people throughout the Holy Land are incredibly strong. It's like he lives there. He's a part of their family. He's a part of their villages. All over the place, people would greet him saying, Steve, Steve, how are you doing? And because of that, we received a lot of special access and privileges that many other tour groups probably wouldn't have gotten. And that's where Amer comes in. Amer has his own tour company called Best Tour. He and Steve have been collaborating for years. His family has been in the area for over 800 years, so he knows the place like the back of his hand. He himself is Catholic, which is something we really learned throughout the pilgrimage, is increasingly rare to find in the Holy Land. Now, the pilgrimage itself was structured around the mysteries of the rosary. We hit 17 out of 20 sites where the mysteries occurred. Now, perhaps it was the tiredness and hunger from the plane and going through the airport talking, but the first thing that really caught my attention was how amazing the food was. Every single meal was phenomenal. I'll just get that out of the way. But what's even more important than that, I think, is where a lot of the food came from. Steve and Amer were intentional about every restaurant, every shop, and every business that we supported with our money. And did I mention that all the meals are covered? So when I say that they were supported with our money, I mean that the total package that you paid for in the pilgrimage contributed to so many small and local businesses, many of whom are Christians struggling in the Holy Land to make ends meet. Even as far as souvenirs went, Steve was crystal clear saying, this is a Christian business that is worth supporting and isn't ripping you off with phony products. He not only looked after us, but he continuously looks out for Christians in need throughout the Holy Land. And that is just incredible. Now, sometimes when people think pilgrimage, they don't think comfort. But I think it's important, particularly because of how much we crammed into a day. This is not a pilgrimage for people who don't like getting up early or walking around. Every day we woke up at around 6 or 6.30 a.m., uh, including one day we woke up at about 4 in the morning to walk the Via Dolorosa. Day one, we went to the Mount of Transfiguration, went to the uh, site of the wedding in Cana, which, by the way, we had a priest with us. So couples received the incredible opportunity of renewing their wedding vows there and receiving a certificate saying they did it in Cana. 
Then we went to the Church of the Annunciation and had Mass there. That's another thing. We had Mass every single day at a different holy site. Incredibly special. Finally, we visited the House of the Holy Family and went back to our hotel in Tiberias. So with a day like that, you can probably understand why lodging and food might be very important aspects of this journey. We stayed in some beautiful places with gorgeous views of the surrounding landscape. The second day of our pilgrimage was spent at quite a few more locations. We had Mass at the Mount of Beatitudes, which was personally one of my favorite spots throughout the whole trip. This is because the church has tried to keep the place as intact as possible. The altars where people can celebrate Mass are outdoors, so you're literally sitting next to the fields and rocks and terrain where Jesus was preaching. We then went to the spot where Jesus proclaimed, Peter, you are the rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. We also drew through the Golan Heights. One thing I will say that was also fantastic about this whole experience was that Steve and Amer tried as best as they could to educate us on the current situation in Israel, especially the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. One thing I will stress before I get into this is the safety. There wasn't a single second I even remotely felt like there was any danger around us at all. Israel is one of the most secure places on the planet. Its military is spectacular. And as a tourist, especially an American tourist, no one would even dream of doing anything to you. That said, Amer and Steve took the time to explain what's been going on in that region throughout the last hundreds, if not thousands of years. And that was very insightful, eye-opening, and heart-wrenching too. So we got to see the Syrian border, then went to a local restaurant, which was owned by a Druze family. The Druze are another religion that lives in the area. Then we visited the area and the church where Jesus multiplied the loaves and fishes. Finally, we visited the primacy of Peter spot where Jesus said to Peter, feed my sheep. Now by this point, Steve has given a couple of his signature talks. And when I say signature talks, I mean these are speeches and presentations Steve gives to hundreds if not thousands of people throughout the world when he's not busy leading pilgrimages. And people go to great lengths to see Steve speak. So the fact that he incorporates so many of his very famous talks that he loves giving all over the world into his pilgrimage makes it all the more worthwhile. And Steve is so energetic. You can't tell that he gives the same talks week after week after week after week. It's like it's for the first time. You walk away from a Steve Ray talk feeling energized and on fire about the faith. And this is because Steve is a convert and his conversion story is very heartfelt and personal, but he infuses it with the history of the area and a few key theological ideas so that people can understand what the church teaches better and feel more drawn into a relationship with God. Day three, we checked out of our hotel and headed off to the Jerusalem area. Though before that, we celebrated mass at St. Peter's house. Then we visited the synagogue where Jesus famously said, eat my flesh, drink my blood. And for lunch, we had fish from the Sea of Galilee. It's the same kind of fish, we think, that St. Peter would have caught and eaten. Oh, I forgot to mention, we also took a boat ride on the Sea of Galilee. Then we went to the Church of the Visitation and we checked into our next hotel, Notre Dame of Jerusalem. This hotel is managed by a religious order and it is in prime location right outside the gates of Jerusalem. The rooftop view is phenomenal. We had dinner there and prepared for our next day, day four, which would be spent in Bethlehem in Jerusalem. Now Steve told us throughout our whole pilgrimage, hold off on your shopping until we get to this store in Bethlehem because it is one of the only places that is run by local Christians. And gosh, were they enthusiastic about their faith. When we came in, one of the workers at the store sang us the Our Father in Aramaic. When you go on pilgrimage with Steve and when he takes you to this place, buy something, support these people. I cannot stress enough how difficult it must be for them to even survive in such a tense land. And it's an olive wood store, meaning this is the quintessential place to get a hand-carved olive wood cross like this. 
After this, we celebrated Mass in a little cave that shepherds nearby the Nativity would have used. Then we went to the Church of the Nativity. It's at this point I should mention that we were hardly ever in a line. Like, at all. Steve, Janet, and Amer know exactly where to be, what time to get there, and who to talk to to make sure that there are little to no lines. In fact, there were a few occasions where we were in a line, Steve vanished for a minute or two, and not much of a line anymore. Like I said, the amount of respect that the locals have for Steve and what he does is amazing. That night in Bethlehem, we had a very special dinner. It was a traditional meal with lamb. It was, oh my gosh, it was so, so good. And there were traditional dancers there. It was a local school group that learned this very ancient form of dance that was very unique to the region. That was a lot of fun. The next day, day five, we woke up for breakfast as usual and celebrated mass in the Garden of Gethsemane. That was a special experience. I mean, these all were, of course. It's difficult to not say that about any of these places. Then we went to the church where Jesus taught the uh, Our Father, the Church of Pater Noster. Then we went to Avista Point where Steve enthusiastically gave a 20 minute speech covering the entirety of salvation history from Adam all the way to Jesus. Just the amount of enthusiasm and knowledge he could cram into these talks was just astonishing. Finally, we had a very nice dinner at a wine and cheese restaurant that's on the roof of the Notre Dame Center where we were staying. It was fantastic, what can I say? I'd say it's a miracle I didn't come back a marshmallow, but the amount of walking we did and sights we saw definitely made up for the good food that we ate. Day six was particularly special. We walked the Via Dolorosa, which is where Jesus walked. We saw each of the stations of the cross where they occurred. Now we had to get up at four in the morning for this, but it was totally worth it. The most special mass throughout the entire trip for me was at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is where you can visit the spot where Jesus died, was buried, and was resurrected. It was a remarkable experience for me, which you can learn about in my Holy Land Vlogs video. And I think one of the most unique parts of having Mass in that space is that the altar is inside the tomb where Christ was buried and resurrected. The hosts went in unconsecrated, and they came out the body and blood of Jesus Christ. That was special. Day seven was our optional excursion day. And I say optional because almost every single person in the group took it. This was less of a serious hardcore pilgrimage site day and more about, you know, exploring some really fun spots. Sacred, of course, but a little less serious than the Garden of Gethsemane and the uh, Church of the Holy Sepulchre. We did have the renewal of baptismal vows in the Jordan River. That was pretty cool. And then, we got to go swimming in the Dead Sea. It's so salty, once you kind of sit yourself down in the water, you float. Anyways, after that we went to Jericho, which is considered one of the oldest cities on the face of the planet, and then we went back and packed up. Every minute of this pilgrimage was a first-class experience. Like I said, you might not think comfort when you think pilgrimages, but when you're bouncing from place to place and trying to not stand in 90, 100 degree heat in a line the size of Texas, you'll appreciate the effort that Steve and his crew put into making sure it's a smooth experience. Means more time praying, less time sweating. And you can tell that of course, for Steve, this isn't just a career, this is a passion project of his. And for that, on behalf of the tour group, I have to say thank you. Thank you not just, of course, for inviting me to come along this experience, but for dedicating your life to not only strengthening the faith of all the pilgrims that you lead on a daily basis, but also for supporting, intentionally supporting, all these Christians in the Middle East who are struggling and need glimmers of hope in their lives as well. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that the most important part of a pilgrimage is feeling energized. And by the end of this experience, I was ready to go back. By that I mean, I felt reinvigorated to go back home, deepen my relationship with God, and spread the gospel message. 
and I can attest that many of my fellow pilgrims felt this way as well. I think this is one of the fundamental differences between a pilgrimage and a vacation. In a vacation, by the end of the week, you think, oh my gosh, I gotta go back. By the end of a pilgrimage, you feel, yes, I am ready to go back. I am ready for my hands and feet that have walked and felt the places that Christ did to do the work that God wants me to. And for that, I gotta say, Steve, this pilgrimage is a resounding success. You can learn more about this at footprintsofgodpilgrimages.com and you can learn about Amer's pilgrimage company, Best Tour, by going to besttourhl.travel. Thank you very much for listening to this review of Steve Ray's Footprints of God Pilgrimages. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll be happy to assist. God bless you.